All right, now going back to these clips over here, uh, we currently have this set up where each clip is going to play for a bar and then go to the next clip. And they're all going to play for a bar because we have follow action linked to the length of the clip. Now, let's say that instead of having these all play and they're all going to be at different pitches and, you know, that's cool. But maybe what I want to do is create a different rhythm with these clips. And what we could do is we can treat each one of these clips like a different portion of the loop, right? And maybe we'll make it so that each clip plays for a beat uh, or maybe plays for two beats if you want to go for more of a halftime kind of style. Uh, maybe we'll make them all start at a different position. Maybe we can loop a different portion of them. Uh, let's just get a bit more creative with how we're applying follow action here. What I'm going to currently do is uh, select all these clips and I will disable follow action because I want to set up how all these clips are going to play individually first. So this track is still soloed. And uh, like I said, I want to basically create a different sort of drum beat out of these four clips playing in order. And we'll go ahead and now nah, you know what I'll just change the pitches of these back because I think I think I have a cool idea. All right. Now, the first thing I want to do is essentially loop different parts of these clips to isolate uh, different elements of the sound. So I want a clip that's going to be the kick. And if I play this clip here. OK, I don't know that I necessarily want the kick to keep repeating like that, but I want it to start on the kick and then maybe just loop the tail end of it. OK, we'll go for something like that. We'll have one that's going to be a hi hat because that's the next sound that plays in the clip. The hi-hat starts over here, something like this. And we got a tail of, you know, a little bit of this sound here. I could stretch this to make it fit how I want. Let's just hear the loop first. Oh yeah, no, I don't like that. Let's go ahead and uh, let's clean this up. In fact, I wanna find a cleaner sounding hi-hat sound. I see something back here. And again, based on what we're gonna do, I can creatively warp this to basically get exactly what I want and none of what I don't. So let's get this out of here, stretch that out of the loop like so. Much better. I'm gonna go ahead and change the looping setting for the beats warp mode so we don't get that weird little loop at the end. Fade that out a bit. Okay, it's a little bit cleaner. And all right, now I need a snare sound. So I'm going to isolate a little snare hit here. Now, the nice thing about this is that with follow action, uh, I don't actually have to have the clips warped, which means that I can avoid having them looped or time stretched at all if I want. So let's just for the sake of let's go ahead and turn warp off for this particular clip. Since warp is off, it's not going to loop. Uh, and I'll just make it so that a tighter portion of this will play. And yeah, that's fine. That's going to be the snare. Okay, that should be all good. And then we'll go here and we'll get one more little hi-hat sound. And maybe for this, I will get this longer open symbol. Now I'm doing a whole lot of setup because I just wanna point out the fact that uh, this allows us to do some really cool things without necessarily taking the audio and slicing it up. Uh, we can just duplicate the clip, isolate different portions of it, and then start to play with follow action. So let's hear what these all sound like on their own. Okay, that's fine for now. So I'm gonna set this up now so that these all are gonna play in order like they did before, but uh, instead of linking the length of the clip to the loop length, uh, since the loop links are all different, we're just gonna set an unlinked follow action length. Say that <laughs> 10 times fast. Uh, let me select all of these. Select the first one, hold shift, select the last in the group. Enable follow action for all of them. Uh, I want them all to play the next clip and I want these all to be unlinked, and I want them all to play for the same amount of time. In this case, it'll be for two beats. So let's one, two, make sure that's zero. Okay, so now if I play this, uh, we should have a rhythm that sounds different. It should be more of a halftime kind of style beat, and uh, this is just yet another way that we can take advantage of follow action to change things up. So let's hear how this sounds. Okay, now that's clearly too slow. So instead of two beats, let's go for one beat each. I think that's more what I was thinking. So I'll select them all again. Again, since the length is unlinked, I can change them all at once. And now, cool. Now again, since, let me make this shorter. 
Okay, I like that. Now, since these are all uh, using follow action and they're just using the next action, I could take this group and I could duplicate all these clips, Command D. And now I have eight clips in the group and the knees could be doing something slightly different, right? So maybe we're gonna change the loop length of this. So we get a bit more of that kick going in here. Maybe this hi-hat will be twice as fast. Oh, I can't make it twice as fast, can I? Well, maybe we'll make it like this. And with this, maybe we will turn warp on and this snare will be higher. And we'll do something with this where maybe this will loop more quickly. All right, so now let's check out our brand new drum beat. So, you know, I like to play with samples, and uh, it's one of the things I love about Ableton Live is that it's very easy to play with samples. And uh, utilizing follow action in this way is a very easy way to take a sample and essentially chop it up and uh, make it do some interesting things. But we're just getting started. Let's keep going. 